Well, goodness gracious me, folks, the URC final is done, and it's Munster who get it done away from home. We are going to go over some key events and stats and try to sum this one up, man, but it's another week, and it's another cracking final. The URC with the playoffs has been, been a heck of a success. What can I say, man? I've enjoyed thoroughly the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and now the final. Unbelievable stuff. Um, crawled out of bed 4.30 in the morning to watch this one and um, was not disappointed. Didn't quite have the same start that like the Champions Cup final had in like a try in the first minute. It was much more tentative. A few errors, you know, knock on, turnover one, penalty conceded. So more of the kind of tentative stuff that you expect from a final. But the crowd was just as amazing. Record-breaking crowd uh, for that ground. I think over 56,000 people there. Um, sections of Munster fans as well, which was really pleasing to see. And boy, that that investment down to South Africa, plane tickets and hotels and match tickets and whatnot, is looking pretty, pretty well spent now. But unbelievable crowd. And to be fair, despite the kind of tentative start, it didn't take long to get on the board. Marnie Libok, recent kind of hero, gets himself on the board very early. Antoine Frisch with the kind of offload and the tackle. Maybe needed to hang on to that one because um, Marnie Libok read it like a book. Crowd goes insane. Marnie Libok is a hometown favorite. And um, yeah, man, seven points to nil early for the Stormers. But it's been Munster with the ball for the most part. So you could say it's against the run of play. It's really too early in the game uh, to say it's against the run of play. But for sure, it was an um, opportunistic one from the Stormers, but well taken. And uh, Munster will be ruining that kind of early start. You're thinking away from home, you don't want to give the home side, you know, any kind of leg up. But that's how it goes down. But that being said, the Stormers, they were offside not long later, uh, which kind of gave Munster a chance to kind of arrest that early momentum for the Stormers, quiet the crowd down. And then Crowley, with the touch finder, just puts it, man, five meters out. Perfect kick, like long distance. Geez, he had that one on a string. And, um, you know, Munster do what they do. They go for a line-out. They get advantage. They go again. And from the second attempt at a mall, Barron. And he was everywhere. Uh, Barron goes over on nine minutes. So, missed conversion, but seven points to five. So, that kind of, I guess, arrests that, you know, <laughs> crowd uh, getting behind the, uh, the Stormers guys early with that quick try. So, game settles in a wee bit. But, I mean, the Stormers... They're not going to be happy with their first half, ultimately. I mean, there's a few a few kind of key errors from them which are maybe a little bit uncharacteristic. Like, they go for a quick line-out on 13 minutes, but they pass it back into their own 22 and then immediately proceed to kick the thing out on the full, which was a bit, you know, uncharacteristic, like I said. But then Munster concede a penalty from the line-out immediately. So both sides, you know, kind of a little bit off the ball, not taking those kind of chances. But one thing that was working for Munster and that the Stormers guys just couldn't get right, especially in the first half, were those box kicks from Conor Murray. Goodness gracious me. I mean, Nash was just chasing everything all day long. Um, but yeah, they, they couldn't catch those box kicks. Munster were just time and time again able to put the ball up in the air, contest it, either win it clean or win it dirty, basically. Win it on the ground from, uh, I don't mean dirty as in kind of cynical, but um, you know, contest the ball in the air. Nobody catches it clean. And then one of the Munster guys is just kind of able to pounce on the loose ball. Um, to the point where Munster are able to go through some big phases. Rus at one point sees a ball kind of at the back of a Munster ruck, thinks it's out. Ref says it's not. So he gets uh, yellow carded for what's deemed to be cynical play. Munster up for touch. And it's the first of a couple of the tries which they get chalked off. So that during the yellow card, um, they want to punish... Uh, Marvin Ori puts in a tackle on Gavin Coombs, which in the end is a try saver. Coombs is able to kind of wiggle over and get the ball down, but they ruled that one is a double movement. So that's one try chalked off. Marv Marvin Ori gets like an intercept later on and puts a wee dink and kick through. So he's shut down two months to plays during the yellow card. Um, great kind of effort from the big man when you got him back. That's on 20 minutes. Stormers, man, just can't take a box kick is my note. And uh, I think it is true. But, I mean, Munster knock on. They go close, but they knock it on after a wee grubber kick. So, Munster, despite all this pressure, and they get another one chalked off when, like, Peter Romani catches a bounce pass, offloads it to Haley out wide, and um, he goes over. But the, the final pass from um, from Peter Romani was forward. So, 
Two tries chalked off, plus a knock on. It's looking like, and I can hear it in Alan Quinlan's voice. One of those ones where wham, we're knocking on the door, knocking on the door, just not going to get it done. And you're kind of waiting for the Stormers to flip it on its head when they finally get some ball. Maybe go down the other end and score. It just feels like one of those situations. However, um, Munster's line speed is causing some, um, some errors from the Stormers guys when they do finally have the ball. And finally, during the yellow card, Munster get it done. Crowley with the pinpoint cross kick to Nash. Beautiful bounce and um, yeah, a little bit, I can't do much about that one. So Munster go in front, 12 points to seven. It's a great conversion. Uh, only bad news for Munster is Peter Amani, not long later, has to go off for a head knock. It does not come back on. So Archias Neyman comes on. But um, yeah, man, it's been largely Munster. I mean, combine that with the yellow card and the fact that the, the Stormers guys are struggling with the aerial ball. I mean, 12-7, couple of the chalked off tries like I mentioned. It's maybe a scoreline that they would have liked to be a bit bigger. But um, Coombs gives away a penalty at the breakdown in 35 minutes, so uh, the Stormers do have a chance before halftime. Herschel Yankees goes close, but Tyke Byrne with a wee bit of kind of dark arts at the breakdown and Hodden at winning a turnover means Munster are able to exit kind of without any damage done. Stormers have a chance right before halftime to maybe take a wee sneaky three. But they're going for the jugular, they opt for touch, they go for a maul, but they are stopped. So it is that kind of five point deficit at half time. But as I said, if you're a Stormers player at that point, when you've had 33% possession, you've had one clean break to five, which is the intercept, you've had like a bunch of tackles to make, Munster have beaten 21 defenders to two, like five points is not a bad, it's not a bad result to go in at the Sheds kind of reset and see if you can kind of re-engage in that second half with a uh you know with a with a better a better bit of play because yeah Munster have been all over them largely in that first half. Second half Snayman concedes a penalty at the breakdown. The Stormers do up for a three. We change of tactic but Marnie Libok pushes that one wide. But um yeah they're, they're still not done going for the juggle of the Stormers. I do feel like they did want to kind of settler. So it would have been nice for the Stormers for that one to go over, but not to be. Uh, Stephen Kitsoff wins a penalty at the breakdown not long later. They didn't give him, or didn't take him long. Stephen Kitsoff is always such a threat at the breakdown. Um, the Stormers do go through a couple of malls, but eventually end up knocking it on. Uh, Davids has a wee line break and a chance to grub her through, but Haley just kind of flops in front of him. Just trips him over with his head, which is kind of not that wise. He gets yellow carded for that one. So you've got to think, man, Stormers... It's kind of a reverse of the first half, right? You got the yellow card. It's time for you guys to try and get on the board. And they do it. They finally do it. They get them all going. Dion Ferri is able to go over. It's 12 points apiece. A big conversion for Marty Libok. Can he slot it over? Yes, he can. Tough kick, but he nails it. So 14-12. Crowd is loving it. And the Stormers are just finally able to, you know, if it's an arm wrestle get things back going their way because as I said the first half was not the best for them I mean Munster did have a chance to go five meters out again from those contestable kicks early in the second half but again they conceded a kind of dumb one at line out time so a bit of a let off but I mean the game does go a bit helter skelter Munster at one point are back on their own line scrambling with the Stormers guys kind of trying to push them over their own goal line when they exit like, Marty Limbock has two attempts to pick up a loose ball, but he can't pick it up. It's um, it's kind of all over the shop. But ultimately, in the second half, you can feel the momentum just drifting the way the Stormers, they're putting heaps of pressure on. Ivan Ruiz has a big line break, and you're thinking maybe something's going to happen here, but he just slips on the turf. Um, so the you know, <laughs> that notorious pitch not doing the Stormers guys any favors. Then Limbock has a weak carry, but he gets himself isolated, so Fiki Toa is able to win a turnover. Um, you could feel the pressure building, but for the Stormers, no points. No points for all that pressure. Uh, Munster, having defended for an age, do what I was kind of afraid was going to happen to them in the first half, and that they've been defending for ages. They get down the other half. They get this helps into the Stormers 22 for the first time in a long time, go through a bunch of phases, and eventually, man, they do it. They get the try to put them in front, and it's a thing of beauty, man. The wide pass, I mean, initially it's Casey's pass who's come on, uh, the wide pass from Haley, and then um, Hodden is able to kind of finish it off. Goodness gracious me. And then the conversion makes it 
14. The Stormers, they need a try. Well, they don't have much time to do it. But Crowley's manages to get himself yellow carded for a wee cynical one. Uh, tapping the ball out of the nine's hands at the breakdown. Uh, so the Stormers have got a chance. They do have a chance, man. They just go outside uh, the Munster 22 with that penalty. And then the Munster guys just flood the breakdown, but all kinds of illegal ways. It's it's kind of rush of blood stuff. And you're thinking, this is insane. Why are you doing that? You're giving the Stormers another chance to maul it. Fareed's already got one more try in this game. What are you doing? But, I mean, you can understand the kind of scramble, the desperation. Stormers go for the maul again. But kind of similar to any of the first half. Munster shut it down. And that's the game. Munster, away quarterfinal, away semifinal, and now an away win in the final. Just insane. Crazy stuff. I'm glad I crawled out of bed at 4.30 to watch that one. Um, that's the way a final is supposed to go, man. A couple of lead changes. And, um, yeah, tension right down to the final minute. There was no red cards, fortunately. There were a few yellows. But, um, yeah, really, really crazy stuff. Great atmosphere, great crowd, and great celebrations for the Munster guys. First trophy almost at 11 years. Unbelievable. I mean, kind of cool for the uh, Munster guys to see some of those long-serving Munster players actually finally get their hands on some silverware while wearing the Munster jersey. Sad for the Stormers guys, obviously, especially see Stephen Kitsoff in his final game. Uh, not able to kind of lift that trophy one more time, but he did win it last year, so, yeah, it's hard to not feel happy for the Munster guys. I mean, possession finishes 55-45 in territory, 51-49 to Munster, but they had so much in the first half that you can tell it kind of evened up uh, in the second. Run meters is 457 to 324 to Munster. Missed tackles, man, 32-7 with Stormers. The month tackling percentage was 94, which is test match quality. The Stormers were at 86, which is like serviceable. But in a final... You'd want those numbers to be a bit higher. Munster conceded 13 penalties to five, so they did concede a few. Um, but yeah, man, individuals for the Stormers, Van Heerden, 22 tackles, Fari 21, and that um, and that try. Rus, despite his yellow card, had a few turnovers won. But man, Hodnett wins man of the match, seven tackles from him, wins that key turnover at the end of the first half, gets a try. Um, Nash was chasing everything. Fiki Toa, most defenders beaten with seven, also wins a couple of turnovers. Crazy, crazy stuff. I feel like I need a drink, but it's uh, it's 7 in the morning, so I'm probably not going to have a drink. But anyway, if you want to buy me a beer, I'll put a link down in the description, just that one, just quietly. Um, people do that every now and again. I much appreciate it, but yeah. Uh, you guys take care of yourselves. Drink in moderation if you are having one. Uh, well done, Munster. Commiseration, Stormers, but cracking final, cracking URC season. I look forward to to next year's competition but we've still got the rugby world cup between now and then so um yeah you guys let us know your thoughts take care of yourselves and uh, i'll talk to you guys again soon see you later.